Okay. So in the last video, we brought our vector file, our SVG, scalable vector graphics, into a raster program and put it onto different colored backgrounds. A black background, a gray background, and a white background. And in black, it totally disappeared. So to fix that, we double click just on the layer to get to the layer style, the layer effect. <laughs> ah, turned all of the layer effects we used. These are the ones I recommend. Stroke, outer glow, drop shadow. And you can individually adjust them. They are, their opacity, their softness, their uh, settings. Oh, but here I'm mu muffled in the Zoom video, so let me plug in my external mic. Okay, hopefully you can hear me better. So now, with each of these settings, I can adjust the different strategies for how my logo will show up. Not just on black, but on any dark background, right? So you can see that now with these settings, which I can always adjust in the layer style options. This is true in Photoshop as well as Photo P. I can adjust the opacity, I can adjust the noise, the jitter, the size, the spread, and you'll see what all of those do. But I think it actually helps it on any background, not just black. And then because we're always choosing 100% white, as our color option for these offsets, when we see it on a white background, like when we print it, none of them will show up at all. So it just shows our clean black shapes. Okay, now I'm going to turn off all the backgrounds, but the white pixels for the offset are still there, even if they're at a low opacity. And now I'm going to save this file and export it as a PNG. It's a good idea to save it as a PSD first. Remember, I gave it that name when I set it up. So it is here. Oh, I don't need to open it in Photoshop, but it's saved as a Photoshop file with all those different layers and options, including all the layer effects. Once I save it as a PSD, I can save it by exporting it as a PNG. So remember to have your backgrounds turned off because you want to use the transparency of the PNG. And the PNG, when you upload it to Canvas, will just look like white, like black clean shapes. So I'll show you what I mean. So if I go to the assignment and I load it into Canvas, because Canvas has a white background. The PNG I just downloaded will just look like clean cutouts, right? But if I take that same file and I load it as a portfolio, a final portfolio project into Imgur, which I have the link for here, the Imgur site has a dark gray background and the files actually have a black background. So you can see here, the black shapes with the offset, here replaced with color, here filled in with color. We're gonna go over all of that. So if I add one here and I drop my PNG that I just put into Canvas in, it's gonna show up on a black background, but with the offset, it will be visible. So an offset makes it really, really versatile. And versatility is important. Okay, so going back, now that we have it saved, 
and I want to make sure it's saved in all the right places. So I'm going to move it from my downloads and save it into my folder. The PNG is the one that gets uploaded. And if I open it just in preview, it will show up on a gray background on a Mac. And you can see that the white is there. It's just a low opacity and just gives it a little bit of a glow. Kind of nice. OK. The important thing is that this is still a smart object. It is still a vector file, so it can still be scaled to any size. So don't rasterize it. Now I can make a duplicate of that. So Command J, and I'm going to play with coloring. So there are kind of two ways you can color your black shape logo. One is to use layer effects. That's why I made a duplicate. And instead of making them white, you can play with color layer effects on your black shape logo. Come on, open up. <laughs> there we go. So instead of playing with stroke and outer glow and drop shadow, though you could play with those still and just change them from white to other colors. So I could try like a red drop shadow. And that gives it some effect. The ones that are most useful for your logo and coloring the actual vector shapes, not just the offset around it, the most basic is what's called color overlay. And that will replace whatever color you have for your, your vector with another solid color. So maybe I want red, maybe I want blue, maybe I'm inspired by something a little funkier, just like my logo was inspired by, come on, why is it not changing to blue? Oh, because I changed my drop shadow to blue, not the, okay. But you can also play with the opacity of it and have it blend in with the black shape. So let's make it kind of a deep blue. I can be inspired by something like 80s tattoo coloring and sticker coloring. And instead of it being filled in with a solid color, even with a glow, like you see on the tongue, maybe I want to fill it in with a gradient. So that's where gradient overlay comes in. And I can pick from any of the default gradients. These are the same that are in Photoshop but I can also customize my own. So if I'm gonna be inspired by this, this kind of metallic chrome gradient, it's not gonna look quite as cool as that tattoo because it will just be an even linear gradation, but I can customize the gradient with my own colors and my own steps. So let's add a few steps here. And it looks like orange is at the bottom But then right above orange is black. So I'll put black there. I can even set these at different opacities. Right above the black is a white. Right above that is a light blue. And right above that is a darker blue. And what's nice is as you're doing the layer style, it will show you a little preview of it. And what I want to do is reverse that. There we go. And then I can actually play with the scale, which spreads it out differently. And I can play with it not being linear. I can make it kind of circles coming from the middle, but that's going to be really bizarre or angled. 
or reflected. You know, there's all kinds of different ways. And you can play with it at different angles. This is 90 degrees. I want it slightly maybe angled this way. with a tighter scale like that. And then if I like all of that, and then I decide, well, I want to shrink that blue range a lot and expand the white range. I can add kind of secondary steps. And if I don't want pure white, because a little too strong, I can dim that down. I don't know why it's not giving me my full color picker field here visually, but it's here. And I want something probably more like that. Okay, so I say okay. So I have a custom gradient. I've played with the scale. I've played with everything. I can even uh, play with the, the X offset versus the Y offset and really tweak it. So gradient's really helpful. Makes them a lot fancier. But then I can actually play with the opacity of it too and have a little bit of the black come out. And then I can add the color overlay over the top and play with that opacity. So if I want it to be overall kind of warm, come on, then let me warm it up with a color like this, like a sepia color, and then I can play with the different opacities of that. And then I can add the drop shadow underneath. And I can always edit the color. Remember, this is still a vector, so you have full control. So that's kind of fun. Maybe darken it a little. I can add the outer glow to soften it. You'll see that, especially when it's on uh, different backgrounds. Come on. There we go. And then I can add other things like the stroke, which I'll leave white on the inside, but maybe shrink a little bit so I have full contrast. And instead of it being filled, even though a stroke is always hard edged, instead of it being filled with normal mode, I can set it to dissolve mode. This is a way to get texture. And have the dissolve work at a slightly lower opacity. Then I can do that same thing with the color overlay which is already at a low uh, opacity, but I can change it from normal blend mode to dissolve mode, and that's gonna give me kind of a grainier, more handmade texture. And this is still all a vector. So that's what's so amazing about vector files, is they can carry all of this information on them and still never have to be rasterized. So we got all of that going on, and it will still work on a variety of backgrounds. And that's why we have the gray there. It's very 80s, very tattoo-like. Hardcore. Now, if I feel it's missing something, this is the beauty of it. I can always go back in 
and play with it. 